Okay, so we've been given this question to solve in iodometry, a form of redox titration. A is a solution containing 15.8 gram per decimeter cube sodium thiosulfate. B is obtained by dissolving 19.0 grams of an impure sample of iodine in aqueous potassium iodide and the solution made up to one decimeter cube. A, put A into the burette and titrate it against 20.0 centimeters cube or 25.0 centimeters cube portions of B using starch as indicator. Tabulate your burette readings and calculate the average volume of A used. The equation for the reaction involved in the titration is, that is our equation. From your results and the information provided above, calculate I, the concentration of A in mole per decimeter cube. I, I, the concentration of B in mole per decimeter cube. Then I, 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 percentage by mass of iodine in the sample. Then you have been given these relative atomic masses. Well, this is our titration table. Over here we have our retort stand or our clamp. Then we have our burette containing our solution A. We have a small amount of solution A left over here. It was from this that I poured the solution A into the burette. Then we have Bika B containing our mixture of impure iodine in a kiosk potassium iodide and topped up to one decimeter cube. So I poured a portion of that and placed it in this beaker. This is my conical flask, going to also serve as my titration flask. This is my wash bottle containing distilled water. And this is my indicator. Now this is iodometry. So our indicator is not phenolphthalein rule, not metal orange, but rather it is starch solution. This is my pipette. And I'll use my pipette to measure 25 centimeters cube of solution B and transfer it into my conical flask for the titration. This is my white tile. So make sure I see the color change more visibly. So I start by taking 25 centimeters cube portion of solution B. Then I transfer it into my conical flask. I let the solution get down gently by gravity. I don't blow air through my pipette because that will introduce impurities into my iodine solution. Okay, I have some few drops of the iodine over there, so I tap the bottom of my conical flask once, twice, thrice. All that needs to get out to get out. The ones that do not get out have already been accounted for by my pipette. Now, this is the trick. Here, we don't add our starch indicator before we begin the reaction. No. When you add starch at the beginning, the starch will absorb some of the iodine. And when some of the iodine is absorbed, remember, you will not get all the iodine ready for the titration. So, 
we just go ahead with our titration until we get a pale yellow color before we add our indicator. We getting a pale yellow color means that most of our iodine by that time have reacted with the thiosulfate. So we have small amount of iodine over there so that when we add our starch, we are going to see our blue black. The starch wouldn't get enough iodine to absorb. So I start my titration. Now, do you see our pale yellow? You realize that the deep color of the iodine is disappearing bit by bit, telling us that the iodine, the amount of iodine over here is reducing. So when we get a pale yellow color, we could add our indicator and continue the titration. Huh? Uh -huh. So let me add my starch indicator. You see it turning blue-black. Then I continue my titration so I get a colorless solution. Ta-da! I have my colorless solution. Then I record the volume on the burette. My volume is on 27.1 centimeters cube. I started at zero, and my end point was at 27.10. This is my first titration, also called the rough titration. So I will discard the solution, go for a second titration. We want to perform the second titration. We could have started from where we ended at our first titration. But look at something. We ended at 27.1. That means our title value is hovering around 27. So if I should continue from this place, all the solution will be exhausted. And I'll have to fill my burette again. So it's not important. It wouldn't be necessary for me to continue the titration from here. So I will have to top the solution up then perform our second titration. However, if our title value was somewhere around 20 centimeters cube, that means that is where our title value is hovering around. So if we are to perform the second titration, that will bring us from that 20.0 to around 40. We wouldn't have to discard or we wouldn't have to use all the solution in our duet. So looking at the nature of our title value, to perform our second titration, we need to top up the solution in the burette. So I take my conical flask, my pipette, solution B, I pipette another 25 centimeters cube.
Then I go for my second titration. This time I know where my title value is hovering around, around 27. And remember, we got to a point where this solution turned pale yellow before adding our indicator. So let me think about maybe 19 or 20 centimeters cube of the solution in the burette. So I can release straight So about 19, then I swell. Then at this point, I take my time till I get to my pale yellow color. I can choose to go dropwise, dropwise. And as I add the solution, I swell my conical flask and its contents. Then I add my starch indicator, which turns my solution blue-black. Then I continue, but please, we don't need the volume at which the, 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 the iodine turned pale yellow. You don't need that one for your calculation, please. So don't write that value in your table. But from that time to the end point, you just need some few drops. Few drops. And now my volume is around 26.50 centimeters cubed. Now that is the actual <laughs> tighter value. Because with the second titration, we took our time. The first titration is always called a rough titration. If we are to perform the third titration, we should get an end point of around 26.5. Good. So you can perform your third titration to be sure of the value from your second titration. Then you put those values in your table. After performing our titration, this is our table of values. Burette readings in centimeters cubed. We have the first titration, the second and the third titrations. We have the final readings, the initial readings, and the difference between the final and the initial readings called our titer. All values in this table are to be corrected to two decimal places. The next thing we do is we calculate the average volume of a that we used. So average volume of A used. We look for any two values in our table at our title section that are consistent. Remember in our previous video, we said consistent title values do not differ from each other by more than plus or minus 0 0.2 zero centimeters cubed. Looking at our table, we have 27.10, 26.50, and another 26.50. If you look at these two values, 
they are not consistent because their difference is about 0 0.60, which is out of our range. So we cannot use this value and that value. But these two values, they are the same. And their difference is 0 0.00. And it is within this zone. So they are consistent values. So we can use these two values for our calculation for our average tighter. And that will give us an average tighter of 26.50 centimeters cube. Now that is the average volume of A that reacted with the iodine E uh, sample B. The first question we have been asked to solve says we should calculate the concentration of A in mole per decimeter cube. But before we do that, the question gave us some parameters. And we also got some parameters during our titration. Let's put the, those parameters down. The question gave us mass concentration of a to be 15.8 gram per decimeter cube. We were also given the mass of impure B or impure, sorry, iodine to be 19.0 grams. And that one was dissolved in one decimeter cube of solution. So in one dm cube of a solution. Then, during our titration, we made use of a pipette to measure the volume of B. So volume of B is equal to the volume of the pipette, which was 25 centimeters cube. Our volume of A is our average volume of A used in the titration. And we have gotten that one to be 26.50 centimeters cube. Well, these are the parameters we have. Let's put them to good use. So I, concentration of A in mole per decimeter cube. Now, we remember from more concepts that Concentration in mole per decimeter cube is equal to mass concentration in gram per decimeter cube divided by our molar mass. So we need to calculate the molar mass of sodium thiosulfate. Molar mass of sodium thiosulfate. We were given relative atomic masses for sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. And we said each sodium weighs 23. And we have two of them over here. Each sulfur weighs 32. Then we have two of them over there. Then each oxygen weighs 16. Then we have three of them. When we add them together, you are going to get 46 plus 64 plus 48. And that will give us 158 gram per mole. That is the molar mass of the thiosulfate. We have already been given the mass concentration as 15.8. So its concentration in mole per decimeter cube is given as its mass concentration divided by its molar mass. And that will give us 0 0.10 mole per decimeter cube. Now that is the concentration of solution A, also known as sodium thiosulfate. Let's go to the II part of the question. In the second part of the question, the II, we are asked to calculate the concentration of iodine, also in mole per decimeter cube. But to do that, we need to the titration. The equation states that one mole of iodine combines with two moles of thiosulfate to form two moles of I minus and a mole of X for O6 2 minus. We already know 
the concentration of sodium thiosulfate. Its concentration is 0 0.1 molar its volume is the average volume of AU 26.50 cm cube. For the iodine, we don't know its concentration, but that is what we are looking for. But we know its volume to be the volume of the pipette, 25 centimeters cube. So we can do what we call mole ratio, comparing the moles of I2 to the moles of S2O3. So moles of solution A, this is our solution A, Solution A, solution B. Most of A as a ratio of most of B. Most of A is 2. Most of B is 1. But we know from more concept that amount is concentration times volume. So amount of A will become concentration of A times volume of A. Amount of B will be concentration of B times volume of B. And all of that is equal to the ratio 2 is to 1. We can cross multiply. This one, 2 times concentration of B times volume of B is equal to 1 times concentration of A times volume of A. We already know that concentration of B is unknown. Huh? Then that volume of B is 25 centimeters cubed. So 2 times concentration of B times 25 should be equal to concentration of A is 0 0.1. So 1 times 0 0.1 times the volume, which is 26.50. So we have 2 times 25, 50 times concentration of B is equal to 1 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 times 26.5 is 2.65. Then, to calculate the concentration of B, we divide both sides by 15. So concentration of B becomes 2.65 divided by 15, and that will give us 0 0.053 mole per decimeter cube. That is our concentration of B in mole per decimeters cube. That is the II part of the question. The III part is asking for the percentage by mass of iodine in the impure substance. Remember, we said in the question that the iodine we're using contained impurities. So impurities plus pure iodine have combined. So we want to look at the percentage of that mixture. That is the pure iodine. Percentage purity is given as mass concentration of pure substance divided by the mass concentration of the whole impure substance times 100 percent. From the beginning of the question, we said that we had 9 grams of impure iodine. And the solution had a, con a volume of 1 decimeter cube. So the mass concentration of the impure sample is 9 grams, sorry, 19 grams in 1 decimeter cube. And that will give us 19 grams per decimeter cube. What about our pure substance? Well, concentration is rho over molar mass. It means rho is equal to concentration times molar mass. We now have the concentration of the pure iodine to be 0 0.053. All we need to do is multiply its concentration in mole per decimeter cube by its molar mass. Molar mass of iodine is 127 by 2, and that should give us 258 gram per mole. So the mass concentration of pure iodine 
and it's giving us the concentration of the pure iodine, which is 0 0.053 times its molar mass, 258. 13.67 gram per decimeter cube. So therefore, our percentage pure iodine is giving us 13.67 divided by 19 times 100. And that one will give us 71.96%. There's another way you could have done this one. You could have multiplied the concentration of B by one decimeter cube and get the moles and multiply the moles by the molar mass to get the mass. Then you divide the mass you are going to get by 19. You will still arrive at 71.968%. Which tells us that the iodine we used was 71.968% iodine. And the remaining part were impurities. Now that is our iodometry and how to solve questions involving iodometry. Thank you.